The most tremendous powers are concealed in a fire. It has the power to melt, to liquefy, to burn, and to transform. It's powerful. Nothing can really stand against it. The other elements, earth, water, and air, also have great powers, but they really can't change matter. We've been talking about fire. This is week number three of a series titled Lit. It's lit. How to start a fire, how to burn bright for God in dark days. Throughout the history of our nation, we have experienced revivals. Many of those revivals began right in the middle of a contentious time in our nation. Those revivals spread like fire throughout the nation. The, right now, we've seen over the past few months, there's been wildfires in California this year that actually demolished millions of acres of trees and burned down homes in those wooded areas as well. Those fires, when they begin, can spread and consume everything in their path. And barring a miracle and massive amounts of rain, humans cannot contain him. America is on the precipice of a great revival. Let me say that again. America is on the precipice of a great revival. All the elements are there for a fire to begin to burn and to spread. In this contentious season, our nation is completely divided by politics while experiencing a pandemic. Many of us have been lit in this political season with a passion for a party or a platform or a candidate. And I get that, I understand that. But now it's time to shift and channel those passions towards pointing people to a relationship with Jesus. See, right now, a divided world needs a unified church. I'm gonna say that again. Right now, a divided world needs a unified church. We need to be the example. God hasn't called us to make a point. God has called us to make a difference in our world. Our launching verse for this series has been Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 8 and 9 out of the NIV. And it goes like this. Whenever I speak, I cry out proclaiming violence and destruction. So the word of the Lord has brought me insult and reproach all day long. But if I say I will not mention his word or speak any more in his name, his word... In my heart is like fire, a fire shut up in my bones. I'm weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. See, Jeremiah, who is speaking here, was a prophet of God to the nation of Israel. God gave Jeremiah a very firm message to tell his people. It wasn't a feel-good message. It was a message warning the people that they're going down the wrong path. And this path actually leads to destruction. Jeremiah didn't want to share this message because it brought him insult and and reproach. People blocked him on social media. He lost followers on Instagram. People even unfriended him and blocked his tweets. Today, let's talk more about how to start a fire. Last week, we shared these important four keys in starting a fire. Number one was wood, which the wood represents the cross of Calvary where Jesus died and shed his precious blood for our sins. The second point was oxygen. Every fire needs oxygen. And the oxygen is the the word of God, the Bible. Proverbs chapter four, verses 20 through 22, you can read that on your own, but it says that God's words are life to those who find them. Number three was a spark, and that spark is the fire of the Holy Spirit. Come on now. A spark is the fire of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter two, verses one through four, the New Living Translation. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. The fourth element that we talked about last week was the ground, and the ground is unity. Luke chapter 24, verse 49, Jesus told his followers to tarry, to wait in Jerusalem until they received the promise of the Holy Spirit. And I believe that that was to get them to wait, but also in that waiting process, that time, it was a time to unify them, to get them all back on the same page, like hearts, like minds, moving together moving forward, waiting for the promise. 
This week, I want to build on the, str- on the strategy of unity. We as the church, as followers of Jesus, need to put everything else aside right now and focus on loving each other like we have never have done that before. We as the church, as followers of Jesus, need to put everything else aside and focus on loving each other in spite of our differences, in spite of who we voted for and why. Romans chapter 2, verse 4, the New Living Translation Don't you see how wonderfully kind and tolerant and patient God is with you? Does this mean nothing to you? Can't you see that his kindness is intended to turn you from your sin? See, a good reminder for us all is God is patient, kind, merciful, and compassionate. And because God is, wait for it, we need to be too. We need to be too, right? So this week, let's talk about building a fire and how to light that fire. Colossians chapter one, verses 28 through 29, uh, the new century version. So we continue to preach Christ to each person using all wisdom to warn and to teach everyone in order to bring each one into God's presence as a mature person in Christ. To do this, I work and struggle using Christ's great strength that so works powerfully in me. Invest into the relationship so that we can bring value and speak into their lives. There are important relationships in, in, all throughout our lives right now. So I want to encourage you, invest into the relationship so that you can bring value and speak into those lives of the people all around you. Ever meet someone and they share a little too much of their life a little too soon, or either that or they are a little overbearing. Uh, You know, the overshare, the TMI person at the store, right? That makes you want to get your business taken care of and wrapped up quickly and leave that fine establishment. We don't have to be awkward, scary, or weird. This got to be relational. This got to be normal. Just be real. Just be real. See, back a few years ago, quite a few years ago now, um, I had a coworker that I work with, and I would share with everyone at work about church and what we were doing and, and how we were planting a brand new church, and um, this is at, at another season of our lives. And one day, uh, she got a horrible diagnosis. And I can remember that day so well is that she had breast cancer, and, and she was really just shaken to the core. It rocked her world. It rocked her husband's world. She was super young, and she was super scared. She and her husband weren't exactly at a place in their lives where they were really walking with with the Lord as they were today. So my boss and I continued to encourage her with God's love and and to to continue to share with her to come to church and and, uh, then shared some more with her about how much God loved her. So she came to church and she prayed and she received Jesus as her Lord and Savior. And then she was healed in a service. Her life changed forevermore. Every person she came in contact with, she shared with what God did for her and how Jesus healed her. Why was I weird or in her face or was my boss weird or in her face? No, no. We continually encouraged her to come to church and told her how much God loved her and look for opportunities to pray with her daily. If she was having a bad day, just pray with her and encourage her. Here's what the Bible says and here's how much God loves you and yet you're gonna make it and give her hope but be cheering her on. And that's exactly what we did. And as a result, like we said, she came to church, she gave her life to Christ, and as a result, she got healed. So we're excited about that. Trust is the currency of relationships. It takes time to build that trust in a relationship, but it's worth it. It's worth it. So I want to encourage you, build trust, look for opportunities to be salt and light, to be an encourager, to be hope, to be an encouragement to someone else. So number one is light the fire and use the spark that you have. Light the fire and use the spark that you have. Allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you strategically in your relationships, in those conversations, in those hangouts, at those gatherings. So allow the Holy Spirit to lead you in what you say, lead you in those relationships. I want to encourage you, just take one step out of your comfort zone and watch what God will do. One thing that we've noticed is that in order to light the fire, 
We need to have the right tools, right? We need to have the right tools. A friend of mine uh, several years ago gave me a Swiss army knife, a pocket knife. And uh, pretty much, if you know anything about a pocket knife or a Swiss army knife, is that they're loaded up with a bunch of tools. And uh, it's any tool that you might need at any given time, it's in there, right? So I want to I want to encourage you in a little story about this Swiss Army knife. Is that one day one of my boys found it. So they did what any other curious little boy would do, is that they pulled out the pocket knife and started opening things up, and then started messing around with it. And what happened? He ended up cutting himself. Not a big bad cut, but enough to bleed, enough to leave an impact, right? So I want to encourage you. It's important to know when to use the right tools and how to use the proper tools in your conversations, in your relationships. As followers of Christ, we have tools available to us in sharing Jesus with others. And here are some of those practical tools. Number one is your life. How are you living? Sometimes your life might be the only Bible that someone might read. So how are you living? Why are you so blessed, someone might ask. How are you so peaceful and joyful and so encouraging in the face of all this craziness that we're facing? Your life, your life can be a testimony and an encouragement to someone. Your words, your words, what are you saying? What are, what are you saying? What are people around you hearing, especially during a time like this? And number three is your story. What has God brought you through? What has God brought you through? Your testimony, every test, every pain. I, I, I like to say it like this. There's purpose for your pain. Even though God didn't send it, he'll find a purpose, a redemptive purpose in that, that no matter what you went through, is that he's always trying to turn it so that you can be an encouragement. You can give someone hope. You can be salt and light. And I want to encourage you to do that is that your story has so much power in it, what God has brought you through. Number four is simply the truth of what God's word says. So let's all pray for the right opportunities to share our story, to share what God has done in your life and in my life. See, there was a minister who used to ask God many years ago, in the, probably in the, eight, the late 1800s, um, to lead him to the person that was closest to eternity each day. The person who might not make it to tomorrow. The most desperate, the person in most need of God right now. So I wanna encourage you, that's a great prayer to pray every day. God, who's on the edge of eternity that doesn't know you? Lead me, let me be a willing vessel. So we can ask God for God opportunities, for a divine setup. Ask God to set up your day for you, no matter where you go, whatever you do, on the job, at the grocery store, when you're standing in line at the dry cleaners, or just waiting for the kids at soccer practice. There's always opportunities to share the good news of salvation, to share Jesus, the hope of the world, with people all around us, amen? So Jesus, many times, when he was in front of a crowd, he would minister to a crowd, but he, he would look at the crowd, and he was moved with compassion when he came in contact with people. And I believe that, that that's a characteristic of the Holy Spirit. That's a God-like characteristic that you see people and you have compassion for them. And I love that. What if we purpose to make a difference in one person's life this week? What if you and I, what if we purpose in our hearts to make a difference in just one person's life this week. Then next week, another person. And then next week, another person. And then another. Would you be bold enough to ask God for an opportunity to share Jesus with somebody else? Paul actually asked the church to pray. The apostle Paul actually asked the church to pray that God would open doors. This prayer is found in Colossians chapter four, verse three. And it goes like this. And pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in change. Paul was in prison. So here he's praying a prayer and he's actually in chains praying this prayer that God may open a door for the message of Jesus to be preached. So pray for yourself 
to have an opportunity. Pray for Rachel and I as your pastors for open doors. When you really think about everything that God has done for you, you think about how much better your life is because of Jesus, then your motivation to share Jesus is because you get to and not because you have to, right? It's perspective. Share Jesus because simply Jesus asked us to. Out of an act of obedience, he's not asking you to be in full-time ministry. He's just asking you to be available. He's asking you to be a full-time follower, not a Sunday saint. Come on, somebody. Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. I have a New Living Translation reads like this, don't be selfish, don't try to impress others, be humble, thinking of others as better than yourself. Don't look out for only your own interest, but take an interest in others too. I wanna encourage you in this time, relate and connect with those around you and be intentional about it. Be intentional about sharing your faith because heaven and hell are real. They're a reality. With mental health issues and COVID on the uptick right now, or uh, there's just so much going on right now in our nation and, and, and across, across the world, really. People need hope. They're looking for hope. Don't let those opportunities pass by you. Don't let those opportunities slip by you. It's critical. It's crucial. Be aware because the days are very troubling and you have been given the gift of hope in everlasting life. Even though we're walking through some things together as a church family and what's going on in the world right now, we have hope. Our hope is in Jesus, on Christ, the solid rock we stand. Let love be our motivation, right? A small inconvenience for you can mean eternity for someone else. Be consistent, be persistent, be loving, be you. Ready for it? Just be real. Just be real. Don't try to impress someone else. Be compassionate and burn bright for God. Let that fire in you bring warmth and light and to help people sitting in the dark, the cold that's all around us, at work, in your neighborhood, at the dry cleaners, and in the marketplace. I wanna encourage you, burn bright for God. Look for the opportunities. There's a song that I grew up hearing in church, and maybe some of you, maybe you've experienced this this song as well, maybe you've sang it before, maybe others of you, maybe you've never heard it, but it talks about this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Then then there's there's a verse that says, hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Then there's another verse. Don't let Satan it out. Don't let Satan blow out your candle. No, keep your fire lit. Keep your fire lit. Don't hide it under a bushel. No, let everyone see your candle burning, your fire burning. Come on now, the fire of the Holy Spirit burning. Share your testimony. Share Jesus. Look for opportunities, right? I want to encourage you in this is that God is good. God loves us so much. And regardless of whatever the future might hold for us, I wanna encourage you in this. God's in our future. God is in our future. So we can be at rest in that. We can rest well at night, not be anxious, not have a concern in the world. Be prepared, stuff might happen, but we can be at peace because God's in our future. God watches over us and protects us. Well, thank you for joining us today. We are so thrilled that you've tuned in. Right now, we wanna give you an opportunity. Maybe you're watching at home and and maybe you've never made a decision and asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. We wanna give you that opportunity right now. See, Romans chapter five, verse eight says, but God demonstrates his own love for us that while we were still sinners, while we were far from God, that Christ Jesus, God's son died for us. And just another scripture here, Romans chapter 10 says this, is that if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you 
will be saved because everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we want to give you an opportunity right now to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. See, I want to tell you the truth. There's a myth, there's a lie that maybe some of you have been told or maybe even believed is that, oh, well, good people go to heaven and as good as you have been. No, it's not like that. Good people don't go to heaven. Forgiven people do. So in order to go to heaven, the Bible is really clear about it. It says you must receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So we want to give you that opportunity right now. If that's you, you want to ask Jesus and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, would you pray a prayer with us? Would you pray a prayer with us this morning? If so, repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you now in the name of Jesus. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross just for me. I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior and to forgive me of my sin. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that's awesome. We celebrate this huge decision that you've made today. I want to encourage you to do a couple of next steps for me. Is that number one is tell us in the comment section. Let us know. I received Jesus today. I prayed that prayer with you, Rob. And we are thrilled. We want to encourage you in this is that if you don't have a Bible, we want to put a Bible in your hands. Our church family would love to purchase you a Bible. But also... Maybe you have a device, you can download the Bible app in your app store. I want to encourage you to do that. And as a starting place to read, I want to encourage you. The Bible is broken up into two sections, the Old Testament and the New Testament. I want to encourage you, look at the New Testament, fourth book in, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and the Gospel of John. Start reading the Gospel of John. It really kind of helps illustrate the picture and gives us the great example of how much God loves us, how much God loves you. So I want to encourage you to start reading the Gospel of John. And we celebrate this huge decision that you've made today. So tell someone, read the Bible, and we look forward to connecting with you here at, at, at Christ Chapel. If you don't have a home church, come visit us. Let us know. 607 Avalon Road. We meet at Oasis Community Church Sunday evenings. So I want to encourage you. We would love to see you tonight at 6.30 p.m. It's our night of worship with our guest worship leader, Rory Comtois and the team. It's going to be an awesome night in God's presence. So we love you. We look forward to seeing you real soon. Thanks so much for tuning in today. We are so glad that you joined us, and we pray that this message inspired you to live lit for Jesus, to shine bright during these dark days in our community and show God's love to the people around you. We're so excited. Uh, Sunday, November 22nd, we have special guest Rory Comtois coming in for one more worship night before the end of the year. We're going to gather and give thanks to God that we've made it almost all the way through 2020. It's going to be a great night, 630, November 22nd at our location on 607 Avalon Road at Oasis Community Church in Winter Garden. And then bring the kids out. We have services age 0 through 11. And then don't forget as well, November 29th, that Sunday night at 6 o'clock, we have a dessert night. So November 22nd at 6.30, November 29th at 6 p.m. We hope you can join us for both of those occasions. We would love to see your face. So we're excited about that. Hey, before we go today, don't forget up on the screen are all the different ways to give. Thank you so much for your faithfulness and giving. We're so excited about what the Lord has done this past year, which looks so much different than what we thought it would. God has done some amazing things, and we can't wait to share more and more reports of all the things that he's done. So don't forget to give online, or, or you can text to give. Thank you so much for continuing to support uh, Christ Chapel as we endeavor to work towards some great things in the future. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that you would bless every single tither and giver, bless their finances, and increase them. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week.